Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Josh, and we buy a lot of things on the internet these days. That includes vintage denim jeans. And if the thought of buying vintage denim online scares you and gives you anxiety, let me see if these tips might help you in your next buying experience. Let's get into it. Now traditionally when you buy jeans you would go to a department store or even a boutique or a vintage shop and you can touch and feel and try on all of your pairs of jeans that you might be interested in. Obviously if you're buying on the internet you can do none of those things. You have to see with your eyes and believe what the seller is telling you about the jeans. And obviously that can give a lot of people pause and deter them from buying on the internet at all. Now, while we do sacrifice the ability to touch, feel, and try on, we do gain the infinite selection and generally speaking, better price point. So how can we make buying vintage jeans online easier? Well, here are some of my tips. Now, in order to buy vintage jeans online successfully, you need to know a few things about yourself. What's the style you're going for? Do you want a bootcut jean versus a straight leg jean? Do you want a taper? Do you want a high rise? Those types of things. What is the style you're looking at achieving? Now, once you've decided on the style that you're looking to get, you need to know some information about your measurements, your body's measurements. You need to know your waist. You need to know your inseam, which is the length from the ankle opening to the crotch. You need to know whether or not you want a high rise jean, which is from the crotch to the top of the jean. Uh, you need to know your hip measurements. Uh, the hip is typically measured at right below the crotch and across. Now there are a lot of jeans out there that may have the waist and inseam measurements that an adult would need, but the hip measurement is much narrower because they were designed for young people. Make sure that you know the measurement of your hip because you're gonna want to check that against the jeans you're looking at buying. Now once you know the style of the jean you're looking for and the measurements of your own body, Go to eBay or whichever application you are going to search through and look up that search. Say you want to buy a pair of vintage Levi's uh, with a high rise. Well, you might put vintage Levi's tapered mom jeans high rise. And that will bring up a bunch of different listings with those search terms. Now, it's really important to know how much you're trying to spend. If you're looking to spend like 30 bucks total, you can click even a box that just gives you everything that's 30 and below. This will really narrow down your search results. Or if you're looking for a really high quality, dope looking pair of jeans, you might pick 50 and above, which will also narrow down your results. Now here's a suggestion that I think is actually fairly important, is to narrow your search down to sellers who are offering free returns. With jeans especially, it's important that they fit right. And if that jean doesn't fit right, you don't want to get stuck with a jean that you don't like or you have to pay to ship back even though it was just an issue of fit. So there are a lot of sellers these days that are offering free returns. You might as well look through those first because those are going to give you an added bit of confidence in that the jean that you're looking to buy will actually fit and if it doesn't, it's no risk to you. Now once you've got your search results narrowed down to those specific uh, parameters, I would look at the listings that give you the best photos. You want to find a listing that has a clear photo of the entire gene front and back with details. And this is because a lot of times people will take their, their jeans and they'll take a photo and it's all bunched up like this. It's like, yeah, I know that it's a pair of Levi's, it's a 550, but I, don't, I can't tell what it looks like if you do, don't show me the whole thing. So look for a pair of jeans that shows the whole thing front and back and gives you details, maybe like around the back side to make sure there are no holes uh, in the crotch area. Cause like right here, actually in this pair of jeans, there is a little itty bitty hole right here on this pair of jeans. You want to know that before you buy them. So make sure that the pictures that are being shown are very clear and that you can see any defects. Now you don't have to just rely on your ability to look at the photos. Sellers should be listing any other defects or distinctive elements of these jeans in the description of the listing. Now here's some things specifically about looking at an individual pair you need to remember. The size tag doesn't mean hardly anything at this point. 
That size was a manufacturer size from probably 20 or more years ago, and it does not compare to modern day jeans. A size eight is not a size eight today. It's not a size eight from the 70s. You need to know the measurements. And a lot of sellers will put the size that's on the tag because of course that makes sense. And it says it's a size eight. Well, that size eight could be 25 inch waist. It could be a 29 inch waist. You just don't know. And that's why you need to rely only on the measurements, not the size tag itself. Now, especially for guys jeans that are based on the original measurements, a pair of 3232s from 25 years ago have shrunk and been worn out. They're not gonna be 32, 32s as of today. A lot of listeners, unfortunately, don't really know what to do, and they advertise the original manufacturer size and don't give you the accurate size of the measurements of that particular pair of jeans. So again, be aware that the measurements are the important thing. The size that's advertised on the jeans is not that important. Now, it's also important to make sure that when you're looking at a particular listing, that the seller is a reputable seller. Make sure they have good feedback. Make sure that they have some history and experience selling jeans. Go look at their other items, see if they sell a lot of jeans. If they sell a lot of jeans, they've probably been doing this a bit and they've encountered all of the problems and sorted them out already. Now, another thing for you to be aware of when looking at an individual listing is not necessarily to take the seller at their word. Not every listing on eBay is a Levi's expert. I see a lot of people advertise that this jean is from the 70s when it's really from like 96. Or this jean is uh, salvage when it clearly isn't salvage. And that could be a big problem. So it's important for you, the buyer, to know how to weed through that. Now this is the unfortunate part of the internet is just there's so many options. There's a lot of bad options. So if you're looking for a 1970s vintage Levi's bell bottom pair of jeans, make sure that you can recognize what a 1970s Levi's pair of bell bottoms looks like. Of course, not everybody has that knowledge. That's why I have our Vintage Levi's series up here in the eye above that you can check out and do all the research for yourself and help you make better decisions when buying vintage jeans on the internet. Now, always remember that it is perfectly legitimate for you to ask questions about the jeans you're looking at buying. If you need another additional measurement, let's say the leg opening, which is not typically uh, given, uh, and you, but you want to know it, it's okay to ask. Make sure you send them a message politely and ask that they would measure it for you. They may do it, they may not, and if they don't do it, then they lost your business. Now, it's important to remember not to believe everything you see. Just because a particular listing has a model and it makes her butt look great doesn't mean that jean's gonna do the same for you. That's why it's important to know your measurements and important to know the style you're looking for. And it's important to have free returns so that in case it doesn't make your butt look like that model, you can send it back and find a pair of jeans that does. So those are some of my tips. If you have your own personal tips, leave them in the comments below and help out everyone who sees this video because I'm sure other people have questions and concerns and as the internet grows, we're gonna be buying more and more online. So stuff like this is more and more important. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.